In mathematics, a projective plane is a geometric structure that extends the concept of a plane. In the ordinary Euclidean plane, two lines typically intersect in a single point, but there are some pairs of lines that do not intersect. A projective plane can be thought of as an ordinary plane equipped with additional points at infinity, where parallel lines intersect. Thus any two lines in a projective plane intersect in one and only one point. Renaissance artists, in developing the techniques of drawing in perspective, laid the groundwork for this mathematical topic. The archetypical example is the real projective plane, also known as the extended Euclidean plane. This example, in slightly different guises, is important in algebraic geometry, topology and projective geometry where it may be denoted variously by PG, RP2, or P2 among other notations. There are many other projective planes, both infinite, such as the complex projective plane, and finite, such as the Fano plane. A projective plane is a two-dimensional projective space, but not all projective planes can be embedded in three-dimensional projective spaces. The embedding property is a consequence of a result known as de Sargue's theorem. Definition A projective plane consists of a set of lines, a set of points, and a relation between points and lines called incidence. Having the following properties Given any two distinct points, there is exactly one line incident with both of them. Given any two distinct lines, there is exactly one point incident with both of them. There are four points such that no line is incident with more than two of them. The second condition means that there are no parallel lines. The last condition excludes the so-called degenerate cases. The term incidence is used to emphasize the symmetric nature of the relationship between points and lines. Thus the expression point P is incident with line L is used instead of either P is on L or L passes through P. Some examples. The extended Euclidean plane to turn the ordinary Euclidean plane into a projective plane proceed as follows. To each class of parallel lines add a single new point. That point is considered incident with each line of the class. Different parallel classes get different points. These points are called points at infinity. Add a new line which is considered incident with all the points at infinity. This line is called the line at infinity. The extended structure is a projective plane and is called the extended Euclidean plane or the real projective plane. The process outlined above, used to obtain it, is called projective completion, or projectivization. This plane can also be constructed by starting from R3 viewed as a vector space. See below. Projective molten plane The points of the molten plane are the points of the Euclidean plane, with coordinates in the usual way. To create the molten plane from the Euclidean plane some of the lines are redefined, that is, some of their point sets will be changed, but other lines will remain unchanged. Redefine all the lines with negative slopes so that they look like bent lines, meaning that these lines keep their points with negative x-coordinates, but the rest of their points are replaced with the points of the line with the same y-intercept but twice the slope wherever their x-coordinate is positive. The molten plane has parallel classes of lines and is an affine plane. It can be projectivized, as in the previous example, to obtain the projective molten plane. This argues theorem is not a valid theorem in either the molten plane or the projective molten plane. A finite example This example has just 13 points and 13 lines. We label the points P1, P13 and the lines M1, M13. The incidence relation can be given by the following incidence matrix. The rows are labeled by the points and the columns are labeled by the lines. A 1 in row I and column J means that the point pi is on the line MJ, while a 0 means that they are not incident. The matrix is in page Wechsler normal form. To verify the conditions that make this a projective plane, observe that every two rows have exactly one common column in which one S appear and that every two columns have exactly one common row in which one S 
appear. Among many possibilities, the points P1, P4, P5, and P8, for example, will satisfy the third condition. This example is known as the projective plane of order 3. Vector space construction. Though the line at infinity of the extended real plane may appear to have a different nature than the other lines of that projective plane, this is not the case. Another construction of the same projective plane shows that no line can be distinguished from any other. In this construction, each point of the real projective plane is the one-dimensional subspace through the origin in a three-dimensional vector space and a line in the projective plane arises from a plane through the origin in the three space. This idea can be generalized and made more precise as follows. Let k be any division ring. Let k3 denote the set of all triples x equals of elements of k. For any non-zero x in k3, the minimal subspace of k3 containing x is the subset of k3. Similarly, let x and y be linearly independent elements of k3, meaning that kx plus y equals 0 implies that k equals l equals 0. The minimal subspace of k3 containing x and y is the subset of k3. This two-dimensional subspace contains various one-dimensional subspaces through the origin that may be obtained by fixing k and l and taking the multiples of the resulting vector. Different choices of k and l that are in the same ratio will give the same line. The projective plane over k, denoted pg or kp2, has a set of points consisting of all the one-dimensional subspaces in k3. A subset L of the points of pg is a line in pg if there exists a two-dimensional subspace of k3 whose set of one-dimensional subspaces is exactly L. Verifying that this construction produces a projective plane is usually left as a linear algebra exercise. An alternate view of this construction is as follows. The points of this projective plane are the equivalence classes of the set K3, modulo the equivalence relation X tilde KX, for all K in K times. Lines in the projective plane are defined exactly as above. The coordinates of a point in PG are called homogeneous coordinates. Each triple represents a well-defined point in PG, except for the triple, which represents no point. Each point in PG, however, is represented by many triples. If K is a topological space, then KP2 inherits a topology via the product, subspace, and quotient topologies. Classical examples The real projective plane RP2 arises when K is taken to be the real numbers. As a closed, non-orientable real 2-manifold, it serves as a fundamental example in topology. In this construction consider the unit sphere centered at the origin in R3. Each of the R3 lines in this construction intersects the sphere at two antipodal points. Since the R3 line represents a point of RP2, we will obtain the same model of RP2 by identifying the antipodal points of the sphere. The lines of RP2 will be the great circles of the sphere after this identification of antipodal points. This description gives the standard model of elliptic geometry. The complex projective plane CP2 arises when K is taken to be the complex numbers. It is a closed complex 2 manifold, and hence a closed, orientable real 4 manifold. It and projective planes over other fields serve as fundamental examples in algebraic geometry. The quaternionic projective plane is also of independent interest. Finite field planes by Wedderburn's theorem, a finite division ring must be commutative and so a field. Thus, the finite examples of this construction are known as field planes. Taking K to be the finite field of Q equals Pn elements with prime P produces a projective plane of Q2 plus Q plus 1 points. The Fano plane, discussed below, is denoted by Pg. The third example above is the projective plane Pg. The Fano plane is the projective plane arising from the field of two elements. It is the smallest projective plane, with only seven points and seven lines. 
In the figure at right, the seven points are shown as small black balls, and the seven lines are shown as six-line segments in a circle. However, one could equivalently consider the balls to be the lines, and the line segments and circle to be the points. This is an example of duality in the projective plane. If the lines and points are interchanged, the result is still a projective plane. A permutation of the seven points that carries collinear points to collinear points is called a collineation or symmetry of the plane. The collineations of a geometry form a group under composition, and for the Fano plane this group equals PGL, has 168 elements. Disargues theorem and Disargesian planes The theorem of Disargues is universally valid in a projective plane if and only if the plane can be constructed from a three-dimensional vector space over a skew field as above. These planes are called Disargesian planes, named after Gerard Disargues. The real projective plane and the projective plane of order 3 given above are examples of Disargesian projective planes. The projective planes that cannot be constructed in this manner are called non-Disargesian planes, and the molten plane given above is an example of one. The PG notation is reserved for the Disargesian planes. Subplanes A subplane of a projective plane is a subset of the points of the plane which themselves form a projective plane with the same incidence relations. Proves the following theorem. Let pi be a finite projective plane of order n with a proper subplane pi 0 of order m. Then either n equals m2 or n m2 plus m. When n is a square, subplanes of order square root n are called Bayer subplanes. Every point of the plane lies on a line of a Bayer subplane and every line of the plane contains a point of the Bayer subplane. In the finite Disargesian planes PG, the subplanes have orders which are the orders of the subfields of the finite field GF, that is, pi where i is a divisor of n. In non-Disargesian planes however, Bruch's theorem gives the only information about subplane orders. The case of equality and the inequality of this theorem is not known to occur. Whether or not there exists a subplane of order m in a plane of order n with m2 plus m equals n is an open question. If such subplanes existed there would be projective planes of composite order. Fano subplanes A Fano subplane is a subplane isomorphic to PG, the unique projective plane of order 2. If you consider a quadrangle in this plane, the points determine six of the lines of the plane. The remaining three points are the points where the lines that do not intersect at a point of the quadrangle meet. The seventh line consists of all the diagonal points. The name Fano for this subplane is really a misnomer. Gino Fano, in developing a new set of axioms for Euclidean geometry, took his an axiom that the diagonal points of any quadrangle are never collinear. This is called Fano's axiom. A Fano subplane however violates Fano's axiom. They really should be called anti-Fano subplanes, but this name change has not had many supporters. In finite Disargesian planes, PG, Fano subplanes exist if and only if Q is even. The situation in non-Disargesian planes is unsettled. They could exist in any non-Disargesian plane of order greater than 6, and indeed, they have been found in all non-Disargesian planes in which they have been looked for. An open question is, does every non-Disargesian plane contain a Fano subplane? A theorem concerning Fano subplanes due to is, if every quadrangle in a finite projective plane has collinear diagonal points, then the plane is Disargesian. Affine planes Projectivization of the Euclidean plane produced the real projective plane. The inverse operation, starting with a projective plane, remove one line and all the points incident with that line, produces an affine plane. Definition more formally an affine plane consists of a set of lines and a set of points, and a relation between points and lines called incidence, having the following properties. Given any two distinct points, there is exactly one line incident with both of them. 
Given any line L and any point P not incident with L, there is exactly one line incident with P that does not meet L. There are four points such that no line is incident with more than two of them. The second condition means that there are parallel lines and is known as Playfair's axiom. The expression, does not meet, in this condition is shorthand for, there does not exist a point incident with both lines, the Euclidean plane in, the molten plane are examples of infinite affine planes. A finite projective plane will produce a finite affine plane when one of its lines and the points on it are removed. The order of a finite affine plane is the number of points on any of its lines. The affine planes which arise from the projective planes PG are denoted by AG. There is a projective plane of order N if and only if there is an affine plane of order N. When there is only one affine plane of order N, there is only one projective plane of order N, but the converse is not true. The affine planes formed by the removal of different lines of the projective plane will be isomorphic if and only if the removed lines are in the same orbit of the collineation group of the projective plane. These statements hold for infinite projective planes as well. Construction of projective planes from affine planes The affine plane K2 over K embeds into Kp2 via the map which sends affine coordinates to homogeneous coordinates. The complement of the image is the set of points of the form. From the point of view of the embedding just given, these points are the points at infinity. They constitute a line in Kp2, namely, the line arising from the plane in K3, called the line at infinity. The points of infinity are the extra points where parallel lines intersect in the construction of the extended real plane. The point is where all lines of slope x2, x1 intersect. Consider for example the two lines in the affine plane K2. These lines have slope 0 and do not intersect. They can be regarded as subsets of Kp2 via the embedding above, but these subsets are not lines in Kp2. Add the point to each subset, that is, let these are lines in Kp2, U arises from the plane in K3, while Y arises from the plane. The projective lines U and Y intersect it. In fact, all lines in K2 of slope 0, when projectivized in this manner, intersect at in Kp2. The embedding of K2 into Kp2 given above is not unique. Each embedding produces its own notion of points of infinity. For example, the embedding has as its complement those points of the form, which are then regarded as points at infinity. When an affine plane does not have the form of K2 with Ka division ring, it can still be embedded in a projective plane. But the construction used above does not work. A commonly used method for carrying out the embedding in this case involves expanding the set of affine coordinates and working in a more general algebra. Generalize coordinates One can construct a coordinate ring, a so-called planar ternary ring, corresponding to any projective plane. A planar ternary ring need not be a field or division ring, and there are many projective planes that are not constructed from a division ring. They are called non disargasian projective planes and are an active area of research. The Kali plane is a projective plane over the octonions is one of these because the octonions do not form a division ring. Conversely, given the plane a ternary ring, a projective plane can be constructed. The relationship is not one to one. A projective plane may be associated with several non-isomorphic planar ternary rings. The ternary operator T can be used to produce two binary operators on the set R by A plus B equals T and A B E equals T. The ternary operator is linear if T equals X M plus K. When the set of coordinates of a projective plane actually form a ring, a linear ternary operator may be defined in this way. Using the ring operations on the right, to produce a planar ternary ring. Algebraic properties of this planar ternary coordinate ring turn out to correspond to geometric incidence properties of the plane. For example, de Sarge's theorem corresponds to the coordinate ring being obtained from a division ring, while Pappas's theorem corresponds to this ring being obtained from a commutative field.
A projective plane satisfying Pappus's theorem universally is called a Pappian plane. Alternative, not necessarily associative, division algebras like the octonians correspond to Mufang planes. There is no known purely geometric proof of the purely geometric statement that disargues theorem implies Pappus a theorem in a finite projective plane. The most common proof uses coordinates in a division ring and Wedderburn's theorem that finite division rings must be commutative Bamberg and Pentila give a proof that uses only more elementary algebraic facts about division rings to describe a finite projective plane of order n using non-homogeneous coordinates and a planar ternary ring. Let one point be labeled. Label n points, where r equals 0. Label n two points, where r c equals 0. On these points, construct the following lines. One line, infinity equals n lines c equals, where c equals 0, n two lines r c equals, and the points, where x r c equals 0, and t is the ternary operator of the planar ternary ring. For example, for n equals 2 we can use the symbols 0, 1, associated with the finite field of order 2. One line, infinity, equals, two lines, c, equals, c equals 0, 1, 0, equals, 1, equals, four lines, r, c, and the points, where i equals 0, 1, r, c equals 0, 0, 0. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1.